Before we start today's episode, I want to share with you, if you've been thinking about becoming a Families Fly Free member, there is no better time than right now. You have got the lowest price that you will ever see membership again, plus through Thursday, October 26th at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, when you become a member, you're going to get 10,000 Southwest points as a free bonus to start you off. And let me tell you, 10,000 points is plenty to get one or even two free round trips once you have access to all the insider hacks and tricks that we teach. Now, if you want to learn more about Families Fly Free, I'm hosting a special Families Fly Free open house on Wednesday, October 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon Central, 11 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Pacific. We're going to have some current Families Fly Free members on, so you can ask them any questions you want directly. I'm going to be on there as well, so you can ask me any questions that you want. And we're going to show you what the online portion of membership looks like, so you can visualize it. We'll play a fun game, and the best part I'm going to give away 25,000 Southwest points too. So you could win points and get points when you join. If you want to come to the open house, you can sign up at familiesflyfree.com slash open house, all one word all together. And that will secure your spot. I also want to let you know that the price of membership is going up very, very soon. So don't delay making a decision Get in while you can get 10,000 Southwest points as a bonus and while you can pay the lower price. And if you have any questions at all, please ask them. We don't want you to not become a member because you had a question that you just didn't ask. Bring it to the open house or you're welcome to email it directly to me at info at familiesflyfree.com and I'll get right back to you. We want to help your family save thousands of dollars just like so many other families are doing inside the membership. We can't wait to meet you guys and start sharing all of our amazing information with you ASAP. Now, please enjoy today's episode. Do you love to travel and save money? Or do you wish you could travel, but money is holding you back? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Families Fly Free Podcast, where I show you how to fly your family free forever using my simple fly free formula. I'm your host, Lynn Mettler. My family of four has mastered the art of flying free as simply as possible since 2015, and I want to show your family how to do it too. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Families Fly Free Podcast. I'm your host, Lynn Mettler. One of the most common complaints I hear when I explain to people that a key way to make flying free with travel rewards as easy as possible is to focus most of your efforts on flying Southwest Airlines. And one of the most common complaints I hear when I say that is, no thank you, Southwest doesn't have assigned seating. Listen, I hear you on this one. I do. I know that it's not ideal not to know where you're going to sit on the plane or, of course, to potentially worry of, that your family might not be able to sit together, especially if you have young kids. But I want to reassure you that it's not as bad as you think. And thus, the title of today's episode, Why No Assigned Seats is Not as Bad as You Think. I want to encourage you not to dismiss the possibility of flying your whole family for free six or more times a year by dismissing Southwest Airlines outright because of this reason. We've had so many members who were unsure of Southwest at first, including my own family. We had only ever flown Southwest once before when we had learned about how to use travel rewards to fly for free. And we totally thought it was weird that we didn't have an assigned seat. But remember, weird is different than bad. The two are not the same. It may not be something you're used to, but could you get used to it? You can. It is a process that you can learn to navigate like a pro so you can travel with your family beyond what you can imagine. 
If it comes down to not flying places you'd be able to go, if you were flying Southwest on points or dealing with no assigned seats, I'm betting you're going to choose to travel to these amazing places. So here are some reasons why no assigned seats is not as bad as you think. First of all, having no assigned seats it turns out is the fastest way to board. Who knew? We have really paid attention to this recently as we flew Delta a couple of times this summer using our flexible travel rewards points. And we noticed it definitely seemed to take a lot longer to board on Delta. And when you board faster, of course, you're on your way to your destination sooner, which is your whole point is to get to the destination, and you experience fewer delays or missed connections. And all of that is a win these days for sure. Second, if you've never flown Southwest Airlines, or maybe you've just never stopped to think about it, but there's actually really no great seats on Southwest anyway. None of the seats are terrible, but none of them are great. There is no first class or even a business class on Southwest, and the seats are really all just the same. The Really, the only better options are the emergency row, and keep in mind, if you're traveling with a family, um, with younger kids, everyone in your group has to be 15 or older in order to sit there. So you've got the emergency row and or maybe the front of the plane so you can get off sooner. Now, I hear a lot of you thinking, but I want to avoid the middle seat, right? But if you're stopped to think about it, if you're flying with your family, even if there's just two of you, you're likely going to be taking a middle seat anyway, so you can sit next to one another. So you don't even really have to worry about that one too much either. And I personally even like the back of the plane because less people are having to pass you by um, throughout the flight to get on, to get off, to go to the bathroom, all of that. And you actually can get really good photos from the back of the plane of your destination or wherever you're departing from. You can get some great pictures. Another consideration is often bin space overhead um, for carry-on bags. But worst case scenario, if they run out of bin space, they can check the bag for you. Now, number three is the big one. I know so many of you are worried that your kids are not going to be able to sit with you or somehow they're going to end up sitting by themselves. And I promise you, Southwest is not going to let that happen. Um, first of all, if you have kids who are six or younger, if any of your kids are six or younger, you can board during family boarding, which is between boarding groups A and B. And it's very, very unlikely if you board between A and B that your family is not going to be able to find enough seats together for at least one parent to sit with each child or children. Um, so keep that in mind. And up to two adults traveling with a child who is six or younger can go ahead and board during between A and B. Now, if you did ever find yourself in a situation where you can't find two seats together or seats together for an adult to sit with younger kids. And that's only ever happened to me once. And at that time, my son was plenty old enough not to sit next to me. And he just sat directly in front of me in the seat in front of me. But if that were to happen to you with younger kids, um, ask the flight attendant, let them know the situation and they will help you find someone to switch. Or you can personally ask other people to switch with you so you can sit together and, and tell them the reason why. And here's the other thing. I promise you, no one wants to sit next to your child by themselves. So worst case scenario, the person who would end up sitting next to your kiddo by themselves is going to switch with you. They would much rather sit with an adult in a different seat than they would to have to try to manage a young child because suddenly it becomes theirs to manage, right? So I've never, ever seen this happen ever of as many times as we have flown. So I really don't think that's um, anything you need to worry about. Just take the attitude that worst case scenario, somebody will switch with you um, and you will get it all sorted. Um, and again, I've just never even, I have had seen people have to switch, um, but not that often. I've just never seen a child by themselves. Okay. Number four is keep in mind that this whole idea is not about the flight you're taking. It's about where you're going. 
And remember, this trip you're about to bar- embark upon, you know, is just, again, it's not about how you get there or what seat you sit in to get there. It's about the memories you're about to make and the things you're about to do in this really cool place that you've chosen to go to. And plus, this is a great opportunity to model for your kids and the rest of your family that where you sit is not a big deal. It's not something to stress about at all. (laughs) You know, you can talk to each other when you arrive. If you can't sit directly next to who you wanted on the plane, you can sit in your less than preferred seat for a couple of hours, I promise. And once you realize how many places you can fly for free that you couldn't before, you're not going to mind it one bit. I always say I would hang on the back of the plane if I have to in order to be able to pay nothing to go on all of these trips. Finally, you have the option, if you want, to employ some techniques like purchasing early bird on Southwest, which checks you in ahead of everybody else, which gets you on the plane before them to pick your seat. Or you can upgrade if there are any open or available. And you'll see this when you check in on Southwest on the next screen, if there's any available, you can upgrade to an A1 through 15 seat. Now these are up charges, of course, but they might give you more peace of mind that you'll be you don't get a guaranteed seat unless you're in the A1 through 15, but um, that you will be on the plane earlier um, and and have a better choice of seats. So I'm telling you, though, that even if you opt for these two options because you want a better seat on the plane, you're still probably not going to get the emergency row or even the first few rows of the plane. So most of the time to land the emergency row, you're probably going to need to be in seats A1 through 5. And those are pretty hard to come by unless you pay for a business class ticket. And you can do that and you can actually do that in points, but it's going to cost you more points and that might ultimately mean less places you get to go if you have to spend more points for every trip. Um, And people who need assistance getting on the plane, for example, that may be in wheelchairs or something like that, they're usually going to be the people at the front of the plane in the first few rows. So really the best way to secure emergency row is to earn Southwest elite status, which is not something we recommend doing. You can go back and listen to my episode all about Southwest elite status and why we don't really recommend doing that. But basically it limits the points that you can earn And by limiting the points you can earn, that reduces the number of places you'll be able to fly for free. And or it reduces the number of people that you're going to be able to bring with you for free. So those are my five reasons why no assigned seats are not as bad as you think. So what do you think after listening to my reasons? Is no assigned seats, is that still a big deal? I really hope, though, you'll consider downgrading the importance you place on assigned seats um, and this feature of flying Southwest so that you can travel more and save thousands doing so with your family. Have a great week, everyone. If you're ready to fly your family free forever, I invite you to join my family's Fly Free membership. You'll learn how to stop paying for airfare throughout the US, Caribbean, and Europe so you can make those priceless family travel memories before your kids or even your grandkids leave home for good. And you'll learn it using my simple proven formula that's helped hundreds of families. Plus, it's risk-free. You either get your investment in the membership back in free travel or I give you your money back. You can get more information at familiesflyfree.com slash join.